I can't recall really the first turkey I ever caught up and killed, but I remember one of the very first ones. I was hunting with my brother uh, at a place he had, and I'm gonna say it must have been around 1945, 46, somewhere in there. And I called up a turkey in the afternoon and, and killed him, and that set me on fire then. I, I, I think I had killed one before that, but that was the first one I'd actually made the call and called him up myself. So, you know, especially these days, going in the woods with Daddy, especially turkey hunting, more than it used to, more than ever, really kind of takes me back in time to the beginning of things and uh, my memories. Let's see, Toxie was born in 60, but at 66, he would go hunting Duffy with me. And, and about two years after that, your grandmama would tell, say, tell me, she said, if you want to go to Choctaw Bluffs, you got to take Toxie. He, he's more than I can handle, because he was full of vim and vigor. I still can, I can close my eyes and I can see his footsteps and I'm stepping where he would step because he was so be on me about pick your feet up and don't make noise. And so I was just like, if he steps there and I step, so I would literally just watch his feet as a little bitty, you know, and, and walk behind him in the woods. Didn't matter what we're doing, turkey hunting, squirrel hunting, deer hunting. It, it, when we first started, I used to always, it was a, 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 always one of those things that I would tell him, I said, son, you're making too much noise. Can't you walk a little faster? And so, 50 years, however long it's been, in, 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 in 2010, it was, Daddy, you're making too damn much noise. Can't you walk a little faster? So it was a worm's turn. The really cool thing, and bless the Lord, we live long enough for this, he's 87, and now Daniel and Neil are 26, 27, and they're, you know, they're taking him. I mean, we all set aside our spring, and uh, I, honestly, uh, it's the highlight of every spring right now for all of us. I mean, you know, we just like right here in a couple of our best spots, we just, you know, sometimes we go through the whole spring and don't kill a turkey on some of them, but we're gonna save it, so when he gets ready to go, at least, it's the best we have. Yeah, so um, about the second week of the season, uh, mom and dad were out of town on a, a turkey hunt down in Florida, and uh, Daniel and I decided that we wanted to take Papa. He was feeling good enough, and I knew where a turkey had been, um, you know, the day before. Um, I, said, I knew there was a turkey in the area, uh, and he had been, he'd been gobbling good. We'd been kind of saving that spot. We drive um, to where we're going. Um, we get back there, the turkey's roosted farther south, a few hundred yards farther south than I thought it was gonna be. He flies down, he comes out in the field the first time. He kind of struts and gobbles a few times about 200 yards away from us. I'm filming, Papa's sitting next to me, um, and Daniel's behind us um, calling a little bit. Turkey comes out, he doesn't really like it. He's only there for a minute or two, and he takes back off and runs in the woods. Um, and I, at that point, I thought the hunt was over. And then, of course, Neil would call him, and I'm, I'm just sitting there excited to be there. And, uh, oh, I don't know how long it took, but it, it, about 15, 20 minutes or so, maybe 30. And about 15 minutes later, he got fired up, and here he comes. Right across, you could see his head coming across the ridge, just over the ridge, you know, it's a low spot, and you could just see the white of his head coming across.
sebenarnya nggak apa-apa. Hmm. Hey, investing. Oh, hold on, hold on, it's too far, Papa, it's too far. Papa, it's 80 yards. <laughs> uh, at least you can still smile. Hey, sometimes you just smile, keep from crying. <laughs> See right there, I was, he was. I, I could see the hen in the field, but he was. He was blocked by some trees. He, 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 it, it pushed him to be thirty steps. Yes, well, what? I tell you what. I guess the only good thing about it is he's not hurt. So we, maybe we can get looking at him and call him up again. I'm gonna blame it on the camera. Cause I, when the first time I saw him in, in normal times, I have a theory. If you shoot the first time, you think you can kill him, and don't wait on anything else. So, but wow, and then I got the call from Neil in a short piece of video that he missed. That was tough. Um, but it meant so much to him for his grandsons to take him, even without me there, and take care of him. I mean, he, my mama told me when he got home, he was literally almost in tears about what it meant to him. And, uh, you know, in that circle coming back around again, where there, not only did I do that kind of for him now, but my sons are doing that for him, just like he did for me one day, just holding his arm, helping him through stuff, you know, taking care of him. You know, after that, it really lit a fire in me to, um, to make sure we got him one, so we kind of dedicated the rest of the season um, to getting him a turkey. So, so what really made on top of everything else so special this spring was um, this bond that just started 20 years ago at a by chance visit at the NWTF show where Harold Knight and Mr. Fox got together. He's talking about, you know, Harold's up in his 70s, like, you know, getting kind of sentimental. He's like, man, I've had a great life. Me and David have done everything I ever dreamed of and my family and my grandkids now. And, all the success we've had, I mean, I just can't even imagine. He said, but you know, the only thing on my bucket list, I got to think about this year, I just, I guess I'll never get to go turkey on Mr. Fox. What kind of pressure has my dad made on someone like Harold Knight, who I think is the icon of icons as far as the hunting industry, no, no doubt in my mind. You know, usually daddy's, he get, you know, eight o'clock, something hadn't happened, he's ready to go back, he gets tired really easy, but you know, he, he really sucked it up and plus it meant so much for Harold to come down there. and. Uh, call a cut or whatever and a turkey just hammered. We call and they're closer and we call and there's two or three of them and they're just smoking hot. Perfect, except for one thing. They just, they came through the woods and set up the road and something went wrong anyway. And he, mis he, dis he disconnected, disconnected. I guess I get over it in 10 or 15 years. I gotta keep taking my vitamins because I don't think I got 15 years. <laughs> I got to hurry up. So <clears throat> might as well go check one more spot. It's an area where well, we have had some late season hunts there, but it's not an area where I ever go, really. I, I just parked and said, look, y'all just wait here. I'm maybe 100 yards from them, and I'm gonna just turn the curve and call, and right when I got to that curve, it's a little bit of brush right here, and I went, oh my God. There was a turkey strutting in the road about 60 yards. And he came out of strut, and I said, oh my God, he saw me. And then he went back in the strut and turned his fan around, and I just backed away, and man, I started running up the road doing the fan sign, point, and whatever. And of course, they start bailing out, unloading, getting stuff ready.
got him, Papa. I got him. Several times in the last years, you know, the gun goes off and you're not sure because I was trying not to look. I could see a little bit of it, but when he when he shot, I knew the turkey had gone down. I take off up the road and I go to get the turkey. But when, when it really, really hit me was when I got back with the turkey and Harold is leaning up there and got his, almost got his head up against Daddy and there's his grandson, there's Neil on the other side of him and they're sitting there and I look at Harold and it's red all the way around his eyes. He got a little, he is sitting there, he is he is teared up. And I mean, you know, I we filmed it, but there's no words I can tell you to describe the energy in the air right there at that moment with Harold, Daddy, me, Neil, his grandson all sitting there together with something that means so much to him and I quite honestly He's going, he's going to the wellness center. He's going to work out. He's got a trainer person because he wants to be so bad he don't want to miss it next year. And he wants to be, right now, he's working on getting ready for next year's turkey season. That's how much it means to him at 87. Uh, so I hope what we captured can do a little justice to it. And I know it's not as big a deal to the rest of the world as it is us, but we just want to share it with everybody because it is, a really special trek for a really special guy. Well, let me, let me put it this way. It, 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 the last 10 years have, have been it, it's most satisfactory it, 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 watch my grandchildren grow up and see what kind of people they turn out to, men they turn out to be, and, and see that the taxi is taking the business and, and seeing it grow and do well. Uh, it, 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 words can't explain just how satisfying it's been to me and, and to my wife to look back and see uh, what, my, my fa what we created it, it, it turned out to be. And, and it's, it's been wonderful. Uh, I, in my in my case, I particularly appreciate the fact that, that my two grandsons are willing to put up with me, go and take me hunting, hold my hand, and keep me from falling on my butt in, in the woods. And uh, I'm doing everything I can to see if I can't make one more turkey season. I've been fortunate enough to, thanks to that help this year, I killed a, a turkey for. It took you a year for 70 years other than the three I spent in the hospital, so I don't know how you get any luckier than that.